If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. I am here as usual with one of my students and my coaches in my program, Joshua Radawan. And today we are going to talk about honey badger don't give a shit does your power animal. And so this one is all about what is a power power animal and how do you use them and what is the purpose of a power animal and all of the fun stuff. So we're going to have that conversation today. And then on Friday this week, we are going to do a journey to meet your power animal. So how awesome is that? So you have five days to listen to this one before the next, before the uh, journey. So, all right. So let's start talking about power animals. So yeah, yeah, go ahead. I I have to say they've been a huge part of my spiritual journey over the last four years. I want to say it was about two years ago, I really started working with the, you know, I look at it as animal medicine myself. But, you know, originally in 2017, what kept showing up and it freaked me the fuck out was owls everywhere, like a ridiculous amount of owls. And I I thought I was going insane because I was like, there's there's just no way that this many owls are showing up in in my life right now. Because, uh, you know, I was right now just going through that first very spiritual awakening point. So I was like, what is this? And I, I didn't really, I just saw you know, it was completely against anything I was ever taught or learned about. So I didn't really see it as an animal coming to to work with me. I just saw it as a bird that was scaring the living crap out of me. So <laughs> it's about, you know, six years later, I went on my first shamanic journey to the to the lower world. And when I came back out, I came back out with Buffalo. And it was it was Buffalo that taught me a couple of things you know the first was endurance for the for the spiritual journey ahead it gave me you know it gave me its medicine in regards to that and it also kind of taught me the story of the the cow and the buffalo and you know you know one of the big things and parts of my journey was fear you know fear fear was one of the huge parts so it was a buffalo that showed me the story of cow and buffalo right so you know a storm comes and a cow will run away from the the storm so the storm keeps following it you know until finally it goes over but the buffalo will ride right into the storm and it's on the other side of it real quick so it was a really really powerful really powerful piece of my journey that's really anchored into my beingness now yeah so you've used a bunch of terms that we have not introduced so we're going to go back and define those so animal medicine So when we say the term medicine, this is a term in shamanism, and it basically medicine is not necessarily like things that you take, although it can be if it's plant medicine, then that's uh, something that you consume that you ingest in some way. Uh, But animal medicine, things, things along those lines, that is something around the energy, the magic, the the morphic field. We'll define that in a minute. The aura is probably a better term that most people will understand of the animal itself. And so the difference between an animal and a power animal is an animal is just the creature. The power, a power animal is the, the archetype of that creature. And so the archetype of the creature has its own morphic field. So let's, let's define these terms, right? So. An aura is something that is around the entity of a physical being, right? So if, if you know, you have an aura, I have an aura, every animal on the planet has an aura, we're all, we all have auras, right? Now, a morphic field is the equivalent of an aura, but it is for an entity or an archetype or something on the astral, something not in physical form. So... A morphic field is it's around things like ideas and gods and goddesses and archetypes and, you know, anything along those lines has a morphic field. It's the it's the equivalent of an aura, but there's no physical body. So it's it's a morphic field instead. So that's the sort of thing that that has a morphic field. So when we talk about power animals, we're talking about the archetype of an animal. Therefore, it has a morphic field, not an aura. Okay. 
All right. Now we've got that to find. So you have an experience with a power animal. Oh, you said going going into lower world. That's the other piece. We'll be doing this as part of our shamanic journey to find your power animal on Friday. And so the the thing that you have to know about the lower world is that in shamanism, there are three worlds. There's the lower world, the middle world, and the upper world. The lower world is where your power animals are, where I think of it more as like your, it's kind of like the collective unconscious, right? So that's a really good, you know, in Jungian theory, right? I really like that. Yeah. So that's kind of the lower world, right? The middle world is the world in which we live. But it's also it's an expanded view of that because it also includes things like where, you know, fairies and elves and trolls and entities that live on the physical plane, but not in our dimension of the physical plane. Uh, so it's all of that. It's our physical plane, their physical plane, all of the physical planes, right? And then the upper world is the astral, the place where our ancestors are. And <clears throat> let me be clear, I am mixing metaphors really hard here. Okay, because shamanism does not talk about trolls and fairies and, and you know, entities and elves and things like that. It, it just doesn't. But I live in a widely, in a wide world where we are breaking down the barriers between all the different structures and silos of information. And so I'm going to explain to you that there are different worlds in shamanism that I'm going to cross cross pollinate everything else. So the upper world would also include angels and uh, our guides and our guardian angels and our ancestors and anything up on the spiritual realm. Okay. So, you know, I am mixing and matching. Do not take what I'm saying as definitive for shamanism specifically, because I am giving you a bigger view than any one belief structure. So, that, that gives you sort of a general construct of what we're looking at, right? And of course, shamanism would never say that it was the collective unconscious for the lower world either. But I'm going to mix and match, baby, because that's what I do. So, you know, the goal here is to be able to tie together everything that you've learned from all the different, pla- all the different um, uh, disciplines that you've studied, right? And so, we'll be doing a lot of that on this show, just, you know, slide along with it, right? Take what works for you, leave the rest behind. I do not require that you buy into everything I say. We all do that with everything we study. And that is exactly as it should be. Okay. Now, power animals. Power animals are the morphic field of the archetype of that animal that comes to you in the form of a guide, Okay. Power animals and guides are very similar things. Okay. The, the difference between a power animal and a spirit guide is in the morphic field of the entity that is coming to help you, right? Power animals are energetically connected to the physical animal, whereas spirit guides are, they can be a variety of different things. And we'll, we'll talk about that in another episode, but Spirit guides can be ancestors, it can be, you know, entities who've never come onto the planet, it can be ascended masters, it can be angels, it can be a lot of things, right? So, spirit guides are are that, but they are not typically animals, right? So, power animals are power animals and guides are guides, but they serve the, a similar function. They serve to guide you through the next part of your journey. Some are with you for a lifetime, and those are called totems, in the in the shamanic world on some are with you for a season and those are guides power they're they're power animals okay so if you have a totem it's a power animal that's with you for a lifetime and if if it's just for a season it's a power animal okay so now we have the structure of how this works and what this is about let's talk about how they serve us right so you've talked about your story. I will tell you a little bit about mine because, you know, my my journey has been an interesting one. <laughs> yes. And so, you don't even have to know these things exist before, before them to come into your life. Grandmother Snake has been in my life since I was a very small child, as has Turtle. And so, Turtle and Snake both came to me when I lived in Salisbury, Maryland, in my parents' house when I was, you know, 
between three and five years old, three, probably three and four years old, because I wouldn't remember it otherwise. And my parents split when I was five. So somewhere around there. And Sneak showed up over and over again, initially in the form of a coiled cobra in my in the neighbor boy's uh, room when he was teaching me to play chess at four. I don't know what he was thinking, but I still suck at chess. And, <laughs> and you know, a turtle showed up finding a turtle shell next to the railroad tracks that ran behind our house at, at roughly in roughly the same era of my life, right? And then, you know, snake showed up again in the form of a boyfriend in high school who had a snake and taking care of a snake for the school project. And then a boyfriend in high in college who had a snake. And, you know, these all got me very comfortable with snake. So I would walk around with the snake around my neck. It was all good. Ro boa constrictor, not not a cobra, obviously. <laughs> but uh, well, maybe not, obviously, so I'm going to say it out loud. And so snake just kept coming back and back and back into my life. So let's talk about the symbology of snake and then we'll get to turtle. Snake snake is all about if you look on the caduceus which is you know the 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 um like the DNA strands of, of the caduceus on a prescription, right? So the snakes go back and forth. Why did they go back and forth across that? Because snake is the, the symbol for healing. Because snake sheds its skin and is reborn anew, right? Snake has been an ancient form of healing, which may make you rethink the story of the Bible. So <laughs> Adam and Eve and the snake, right? If you look at the snake in its historic context, that may may give you a different impact on on that story but we're not going to talk about that today so the the snake is a symbol of healing and of transformation and rebirth and renewal right and so snake really works for me because i carry the energy of transformation and i carry the energy of healing and so when you when you do that big surprise snake is my totem right <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of Native American tribes will tell you, you cannot have snake or spider as your totem. Uh, but I disagree because they have come to me and that's what they've told me. So I don't question what they tell me. I just do what they tell me. So it took me a long time to learn that lesson. And I highly recommend you learn it faster than I did. Anyway, the upshot is that because I work with this energy, snake has shown up over and over again for me. And snake can lend you energy to support you in a process and so that's true of any totem or power animals that they lend you their energy to support you in a process and so when i have worked with snake i've worked with snake around identity shift I've done a lot of work with snake around identity shift because it's super easy to work with snake that way because you shed the skin of the old ego and you be reborn into the new, right? And so that's a very easy connection to make with snake. It, when you look at power animals and what energies they bring to you, it can be, it, it's, it's very much about what that animal is about, right? So snakes are cold blooded. They are, they're warmed by the environment around them. Big surprise, I'm an extrovert. I am warmed by the energy around me. That is the nature of being an extrovert. So that actually works with me and Snake as well, right? There are, you know, things like being dangerous, right? If you're venomous, you you have the ability to snap and be dangerous. And so that's the whole being the biggest bad in the room if if you're under spiritual attack. That's the uh, that's the piece there and we'll talk more about that at some point. But there's a lot of pieces and parts. So snake also can get into places that are, you know, kind of small and secretive and hides in the in the dirt. And, you know, snakes don't generally want to bother you. They, they don't want to be bothered and they don't want to bother you. They just want to be left alone to live their lives. And that's kind of where I'm at. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it, they don't attack until they're pushed into a corner, right? Which, which means that they're not in attack mode. They're not in warrior mode. And this is, this is one of the, those things that Josh and I have talked about recently is being careful what, what mode you 
approach the world with because, you know, I, you know, it's so funny. I woke up this morning, we're going to take a little side trip here, but I woke up this morning and I realized, so Sparta is not my given name. Sparta is the name I took after I got divorced from my first husband. And I took that name because at the time I was very much in my warrior self and it had been a pen name for me in college. And it had been a pen name for me in the walls, on the walls of the hallways in the University of California, San Diego. And there, there's a tradition there of what they call peeps, which is the community of wall writers. And, you know, yes, it's, it's, it's a high f- art form of vandalism. Let me be clear. Okay. <laughs> it's well past the statute of limitations. So I can talk about this now. <laughs> But back in 1988, that's how long ago this was. Yes, yes, children, I understand. Anyway, back in 1988, I stumbled upon these walls and I was in love with them. I was just like poetry and art and all this wonderful things and deep thoughts. You know, I was I was 18. What did I know? Right. But anyway, there was these wonderful people, I could see them in their writings, and I needed to know them, right? The, those people became my friends. I, I sought them out in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's the only way you were going to find them. It had to be one o'clock in the morning, you know, <laughs> and you had to find them happen, happening to be there. And so these people became my friends. And these are the people who also introduced me to the Renaissance Fair. And so this morning, I just had this aha. When I was waking up, I was like, oh, my God, in 1988, I was introduced to the people who took me to the Renaissance Fair, and I would work at the Renaissance Fair for many years as a hair braider. And those people caused me 10 years later, when I was getting divorced from my husband, my first husband, 10 years later, I reached out to the Renaissance Fair on the opposite side of the country. And that introduced me to the people who ended up being the people I lived with in the magical house who taught me ritual and introduced me to shamanism and introduced me to a lot of the healing work that I was doing. Um, And had I not written on the walls in 1988 in, in college and pursued these rando people, I would not have met the people who put me on the path that I'm on today and taught me a lot of the things that I I know and I work with today. So I just had that wah moment this morning. And, you know, it's so funny, 10 years apart, right? Just absolutely 10 years apart. And so, you know, there were, there were these moments in life where you have these turning points. And, and that was also where I coined the Sparta name, right? Mm. And... I, that the first piece of writing I did on those walls was signed Sparta. And so that's where I became Sparta is in, in 1988 on the walls of UCSD. So, which was, was kind of cool, right? So, you know, spring forward, we're now looking at that, that warrior self, which was so strong in, in the, the, in the eighties. And actually the name was in a lightning bolt for the S and it was very like straight lines, no curves, nothing. And then it became curves when I took it as my legal name. And so it's just been softening over the years, right? It's been this interesting softening that's been happening. And so, you know, the warrior self is still there, but it's, it's very much not what I lead with these days. Right. But that's part of the evolution that snake brings to the journey, right? Is this constant reinvention of self and this changing from one's one beingness to a, to the next. And that's how power animals work with you. Now, you know, it's funny as you're, as as you're saying this, I can uh, just outside my door, there's an owl hooting. So (laughs) owl is, owl is is with us today as well. And as always on, on, on my totem. So, you know, I wanted to share a, a snake story too, because you know, working with you, the it's funny because spider and snake showed up not long after I started working with you. And Which uh, are my these are two, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, so that makes sense. So I, I bought a snake after a dream I had. It was right before my birthday, and it it showed me snake showed me some people in my life that were a little snaky, 
So it, it gave me a, a premonition of, or what it did is gave me an option to remove myself from certain situations and certain people. And, and it was snake that, that came to me to give me that message in my, in my dreams. And I, I bought a snake after that for my, that's what, that was my present to myself for my birthday because it was always something I feared. It made me uncomfortable. So I, something to, to feel into that and see why and she's the sweetest girl in the world she's just the, the sweetest thing and she she now shows up on shamanic journey we've spun her own little merkaba and she she can go with us places it's it's been really cool but it, i wanted to the, the the story i wanted to share about her particular is i was having a rough patch in in january you know kind of really on the cusp of, you know, leveling up the way I am and, the, you know, who I want to be in the world. And at the same time, she was having a hard time with her shed. You know, she was having a hard time. And it, it was a little bit after that, I put it together that, you know, she was showing me that I was also having a hard time shedding my skin at the very same time. So a snake's very powerful and such a, just a beautiful totem to work with. Very beautiful totem. So. Yeah. And, and this is the, the piece, you know, and much like our lives, there are light and shadow sides of all of our totems. So that sneakiness that you talked about, you know, snake mm -hmm. in the grass thing, you know, that has its aspect as well, right? And so that's true of any power animal that you work with. They're going to have a light and a shadow side and, and things like that. So, uh, but, you know, for Especially instance, coyote. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> Coyote and Fox, man. Fox, too. Those are two Fox of my likes, actual totems. Yeah. Fox likes to take shit you thought you needed. And then, you know, you come back and you don't notice it's gone for like a month. And then you go, oh, crap, I needed that. And it's like, well, clearly not because it's been gone for a month. But <laughs> it's, it's so funny because you gave me that exact message in December. <laughs> and I was holding on to a, a partnership in a metaphysical store. And I thought I needed it. You know, I had invested so much time and energy into this project and process of getting everything off the ground. And then I was actually on a plant medicine journey and then Fox showed up and I was like, oh, shit, I know why you're <laughs> You're giving me the message just a couple of weeks before that. And I was like, all right, I, I get it. I get it. You know, I'll let, I'll let go. And uh, truth is, I didn't fully let go for another three weeks. And, I'm, but you know, I got the message you know, pretty loud and clear. So uh, and sometimes yeah. it takes us a minute to to integrate the idea, you know, <laughs> we're like, oh, you know what? Uh, why? <laughs> oh, why can't I make it better? I don't didn't, know. Yeah. Didn't you guys leave me here? You know, we've, we've talked about cussing at our guides at certain <laughs> points of the journey. So yes. I, I can't say that I have cussed at my power animals so much, maybe a little bit coyote because it's been a little rough on some of those journeys, but you know, it, it we both have a good laugh at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Coyote is a trickster. And that's that's why you want to cuss a coyote more than anybody else. But coyote likes to mess with you. It's like, nope, let's just let's give you one thing and then turn you on your head. That's what coyote does. Oh, um, it's, it, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it's 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 highly entertaining. So, you know, one of the things that we learn how to do in spiritual work is we learn how to speak the language of spirit. And Power animals are one of the easier ways to learn to speak the language of spirit because it doesn't require a lot of knowledge of metaphor, which most of the rest of spirit language does. And, you know, power animals are more about just understanding the animal and the nature of the animal. And so things like, what is it? Animal Speaks, I think is the name of the book. Yeah, Ted Andrews. Yeah. That is just one of the most fascinating books that I, I that book in particular and I went on a psychic journey one time where I was just rolling the dice and flipping quarters. I ended up at four separate metaphysical shops or two metaphysical shops and two just random secondhand stores that all had that book. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get the book. I was like, I, I see it. So that book is phenomenal. Yeah. So now you have to just define a psychic journey because nobody knows what you just said. No, well, for, for me, you know, like, when I when I'm really wanting to just get out of my mind and and just you know go and be, I will let spirit take the wheel. I'll either just kind of tune in and you know allow spirit to tell me which direction to take. I'll take tools because it's just fun. I like taking the dousing rods sometimes and then having them point roads, which gets a little finicky. I found out they also go towards water sometimes. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> so I mean, that, that, flipping yeah. quarters, rolling dice, you know, like it, it just just living by you know chance and and 
just going somewhere that your mind isn't isn't taking you right just just allowing the the journey to be the journey um so when i get when i get bound up and i just need to get out that's one of the things that i i do and i usually do it with cassie and we have so many awesome stories about the the things that we've seen and witnessed on on those just random days so to be clear flipping a quarter would be like getting to an intersection flipping a quarter and if it's heads i go left if it's tails i go right right yeah yeah, yeah, and, and dice, you, know, one to, be, you know, above, you know, one to three is left, four to six is right, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's a process I've actually recommended to people on a variety of times because it's a great way to get out of your head, right? We tend to try and control things with our heads. And if we're trying to get connected to spirit again, then you know it's much easier when you can just release control and surrender to the process. And so you know, things like that, or, you know, I like to walk down the road and just, I, I wait until my, my body t- leans me one way or the other. Right. And I'm like, yeah. which way am I going? I'm going this way. Okay. So yeah, it's we'll a follow process. Birds. I'll follow birds too. Oh, that's you a great know, like, I've never done that. That would be it, fun. It, I, it was so cool. Hawk came to me over and over again, you know, like I, I'm driving across the country, you know, like just randomly on all these, all these fence posts here, here's Hawk. Like, Hey, What's going on? Hey, well, you know, it, it, it's really cool. One of the one of the funny stories about this is we were on a shamanic or one of these psychic adventures and I got in my head. I was like, nope, this is where I'm supposed to go. And the road was Tower Road and it just took me in a giant circle <laughs> right back <laughs> to where I was. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> I love that. That's exactly the sort of thing spirit does. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I get it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you want to control it? Okay, here you go. Come back in the circle. Try yeah. again. Choose wisely next time, young Jedi. <laughs> yeah, and then there was an eagle, an eagle flying over the the road we ended up on. You know, kind of circling the wagons. We're like, all right, you ready to, you know, listen to us some more? And I, I, grudgingly said yes. Lead on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So by the way, Hawk is a messenger spirit. And that's, that's what that is about. They usually have a message for you. But yeah, if you are interested in exploring the world of power animals and totems, then then the book that we recommended earlier is a great one. We'll we'll put that in the show notes. Um, And so, you know, as we're thinking about it, I mean, so I promised to come back to turtles. So let me talk about turtle real quick. So when I went on walkabout in 2002, and so and yet another term, we're going to be defining a lot of terms in the beginning of this podcast. So walkabout is an Aboriginal term from Australia, and it means to walk out into the world until you find yourself, basically, right? And so in the Aboriginal world, that means going out into the desert. But in the American world where I was, that means going out in my car. And so... In 2002, I gave away everything I owned and set out in my car to go where spirit would take me. And the journey took me 14,000 miles in almost an entire year. And I lived on the kindness of strangers and $350 a month of unemployment insurance. And, And it was an amazing journey. And turtle was my totem or my power animal for that trip. And, you know, turtle's one of my totems, but... and. That's because my mother was military and then my ex-husband was military. And so one of the gifts of turtle is learning how to carry home on your back. You know, home is for the turtle, wherever the turtle is. You pull your head and your legs in and you're at home, right? <laughs> you're you're inside your protective shell, and which is mo- what most people use home as. And so the turtle was was delivering that message to me along the journey, along with slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to race to get everywhere. You don't have to be there yesterday. You can just be, I was learning how to just be on that journey. It took me a whole month uh, on that journey, a whole month for me to not be sitting on the couch and going, I should be, I should be, I should be (laughs) every three seconds. took me a month to unwind from that space. So, you know, turtle taught me a lot of things on that journey. And I actually carried a, a snapper turtle shell with me on the entire road trip. It came with me on the journey. I got it at a powwow just before I left town. And so it, it 
it took the journey with me physically as well as energetically. And so, you know, when we work with our totems and when we work with our power animals, they bring their gifts to us, the things that they know how to do. And you mentioned spider is one of my totems as well. And we'll talk about this in more depth later, but spider is one of my primary totems. And for me, she initially, the journey was learning how to walk the web of life gracefully before I learned to weave it. Now I'm in the weaving stage because that was 20 years, you know, the, yeah, 20 years ago, Ooh, 22 years ago. Damn. So yeah, I'm now I'm learning to weave it effectively. Right. And so, you know, spider is about interconnectivity. It's about, you know, being, being strong with very small, thin strands, right. It's just like, it doesn't have to be hunking to be strong. You know, spider, th spider thread is some of the strongest stuff in the planet. And so, you know, these are the things that you learn from spider. And so, as well as, you know, territorialism, because spiders are territorial as all get out. They will kill another spider that comes onto their web. They, they don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, but that also means that, that they're good with boundaries, right? Spiders are great with boundaries. And so that's another thing that we need to learn how to do. And so spiders are great, great totem or power animal for that as well. So these are all sorts of things that we talk about and, and your relationship to your power animal or your totem will be unique to you. You know, we can talk about it until the cows come home, but ultimately it's your relationship to that animal and that animal spirit that, that, brings to you the things that you need to, to hear and see and, and experience. And so these are, you know, I'm introducing the concept to you because it is very possible that there is an animal knocking on your door and you're just not noticing it. And so, yep. I wanted to add a little to that. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that I've noticed is, you know, we can get wrapped our, I personally got wrapped up in the idea that the animal had to show itself to me physically for it to want to work with me, which it, it does happen. But, you know, one of the things, and when I lived in the city, I, I started realizing this is watch for logos, watch for, you know, like they will show up in the, you know, the, the archetype, the energy of that animal will show up in different ways, you know, so don't get so wrapped up. Oh, I haven't seen, you know, like a wolf. Well, you know, good luck because you're in the city. Right. But if, 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 if you've been attracted to these animals your whole life and there's like some type of deep level resonance with what that creature is it, that's for a reason you know and start really feeling into that and uh you know one of the things i do is i'll you know when an animal comes to me i'll watch national geographic videos of just you know like how that animal operates to really kind of get a feel for it and to connect with it and and just to to, to feel that energy and then I'll, then i'll sit with it but you know don't, don't get so wrapped up in the, the animal like showing itself to you and on, on the physical and, and and just you know be open to the many ways that these things show themselves to us yeah i mean i i think of things like you know the patterns in clouds or you know like if you have a patterned floor in your in your house like a tile patterned floor, right? Where you just soften your gaze and suddenly these these images jump out at you, right? That's another place that that's these where, sorts of- That's where of Fox energy, came from. Right? They came right out the wood floorboard. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying is that these sorts of things can, can happen. So yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you for that, Josh. So yeah, so I think that's what we've got for Power Animals for this week. So keep in mind that what you pay attention to is what you attract and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show love yourself.